significant change in society is the stem of all initiatives. Women are rising up in numbers to ensure they no longer sit at the back just to watch, but to also participate and take the stand. Judy Oricho is a woman leading others. Let's hear more. Judy, karibu sana. And you look so nice. So tell us, what do you do and who are you? Um, I'm Judy Oricho. I'm born and raised in Thika, but currently residing in Busia County. I'm a human resource manager by profession, but uh, currently I'm a human rights uh, advocate. And basically I'm major on advocating for gender equality for women. Yeah. So is this what you trained for? Is it a field that you've involved yourself in through experience or skill? Uh, it started as an, ex as an experience, but then I ra went ahead and trained as a human rights advocate. Okay. Yeah. So what experience was that? Um, uh, in the community that I live in, I found that most women didn't even know their rights. They didn't even know the, 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 the rights of, of, I mean, the human rights, the right to education, the right to basically the the 30 human rights they didn't even know them and that one pushed me to wanting to educate them on their rights so that their rights are not uh, derived from them mm -hmm. yes and so how do you uh, push to advocate for their rights do you have an organization you're working with yes uh, I work with an international organization uh, USIDHR mm -hmm. which is based in the US Washington DC that is where I attained my human rights training. And locally, I also run my own organization called A We No Love Organization, where I educate women and girls on their rights and try to make them uh, make informed decision as women. Yes. So why, why the name A We No Love? Is it something derived from someone, a name maybe? Uh, Awino Love is very simple. It's basically advancing women's initiative wow. and giving them opportunities. So it's an acronym. Yes. So what inspired you to start Awino Love aside from working with the US? Um, I think um, what inspired me is derived from my story. Mm -hmm. I got, um, I'm a victim of teenage pregnancy. I got pregnant at the age of 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I mean, 13 years, and um, I went through a lot of challenges, including dropping out of school. But then, um, after dropping out of school because of the teenage issues, I schooled uh, in um, uh, a Catholic school. As you know, Catholic schools <laughs> very are strict, very, strict. Very, very strict. So, at some point, I had to drop out of school. Actually, I was expelled mm -hmm. from school, and. Um, I didn't have, my mom had died by that time, so I was only having my dad. And my dad, I, I really had broke my dad. I disappointed him because he was looking up to me yeah. so much. Yeah. He got so mad and things changed I cannot imagine. to the worst. Uh -huh. But then, because that's when I knew that Somebody can believe in someone. You can be seated somewhere and you don't know, without knowing there's somebody who really believes, believes in you, in you and is looking up to you. Uh, after I got my baby, I gave birth to my son, somebody took me back to school. Wow. And that one alone, it's a long story. Yeah. So that one alone gives me the drive to want to create mm -hmm an equitable and accessible society to our future generation. Yes. So in Awino Love, what activities are you involved in? In Awino Love, we have several activities. One, we have education, where we, we identify 
poverty risk girls and take them back to school. We also do mentorship in schools. We also advocate and train on human rights, as I'd said before. And we also uh, uh, advocate on issues of gender-based violence, where we, 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 we talk to women on issues related to gender-based violence and also support them socially, economically, so that can, they can be sustainable in their lives. Yes. So what age gap do you measure in? Is it the young girls or is it the middle age youths or maybe an age? What age bracket do you uh, uh, In our organization, uh, we identify, it doesn't matter, we don't have an age, age gap because you can find a girl who is nine years, mm. but she's poor, she can't go to school, mm. you know. In that case, we'll take that girl and take her to school and provide her with necess necessities that she needs to go to school. Mm. On the other hand, you can find a woman who is a, a, a grown woman, but she's going through gender violence issues. Mm. We'll take her in, advise her, and with networking with other organizations, we always find possible solutions to tackle those issues. Okay. Yes. And uh, what are the key issues that you have come across since starting Awino Love that you must uh, highlight about these young girls you're talking about? Uh, as you know, Kenya is ranked third in issues of teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's a national issue, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the issues that we are really tackling as Awino Foundation. We really campaign against teen issues of teenage pregnancies and early marriages because these are issues that are there. You know that, I know that, and even the public know that. So as a Winola Foundation, those are some of the things that we, we've really identified mm -hmm. and we've done campaigns from almost uh, 23 counties. Wow. And I've reached 24 girls in talks. Mm -hmm on issues of teenage pregnancies. We decampaign teenage pregnancies, mm -hmm. early marriages, and even female genital mutilations. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that, as a Winner Love Foundation, we really focus on campaigning against. Yeah, you've said, you've talked about female genital mutilation, and this is something core in tradition. So how do you help the young girls to get that out of them, that this is not a tradition, it's actually my right not to get mutilated? I will say again, training them on their rights as humans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's against human rights uh, act to be mutilated. Mm -hmm. So actually we currently have a program in, uh, in uh, mass like Kipia. We work with an organization called Navila mm -hmm. Conservation Group. We have a group of 72 girls who we talk to after every two months, we talk to them, and also we supply them with menstrual hygiene management products. So in that process, we have a session with them. In Awino Foundation, we have what we call a program called Semanadada. Mm -hmm. Semanadada means talking to girls. So in this session, we have a session with them, talk to them, train them on their rights, so that when they are being subjected to go through FGM, mm -hmm. they can speak mm -hmm. on themselves and say, this is against my right. So those are some of the things and some of the programs that we do with the, those girls. Wow. And uh, considering you also deal with education, education is a key factor in, term, in a child, let me say that. So what about the two-thirds gender rule? In Kenya, it's a discussion that is over and over and overtaken, but it's not really coming up. So how do you help? With that, how do you ensure that the two-thirds gender rule in Kenya is taken seriously? Uh, with two-thirds gender rule, one first thing mm -hmm. is to encourage young women to go for the elective positions because we cannot attain two-thirds gender rule if we are seated. Yeah. We don't go for those elective positions. Mm -hmm. Two, mm -hmm. we really need to talk to women to come out and vote for women. Because without votes, how will we get into those positions? Mm -hmm. And three, we have issue of culture. We really need to decampaign the cultural and, and traditionals that women cannot lead. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we really need to come out very strongly and talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, the list is long. 
another thing we need to push for the implementation of two-third gender rule mm -hmm. as it is stipulated in our Kenyan constitution. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, someone? There are ladies out here who, yes, there are messages of motivation, yes, kuna women empowerment groups all over, but they're still in themselves saying that, no, I cannot do this, no, I am supposed to be second to a man, Ama, I'm supposed to be led, not to lead. How do you reach out to such ladies? As I said, we had a platform, I mean, a program in an organization called Semanadada, mm -hmm. and these are kind of the talks that we get involved with, because in today's world, you have to, you have to, 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 to be present. Mm -hmm. You have to take up every space. Nobody will give you a space. Mm -hmm. You have to identify a gap and run with it. Okay. If you want to be, um, let's say, for example, you want to be a, a, a politician, you want to be a women rep or an MCA, remember nobody will come and tell you, hey, Judy, we are giving you this seat. You have to go do your research very well, present your agenda, mm -hmm. give us your manifesto, and go for it. You know, most women, they're like, we are not given spaces. But then, what have you done? Have, that yeah, what have you done? Sure. Have you come out and told us, if I'm elected, I'd change A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And then I think by coming out and being, being sure of what you want, then it will be very easy for women to at least uh, be conquer mm -hmm. these men-dominated uh, fields. Yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of your agenda and information, how do, do you mobilize it? Is it through social media or physical door-to-door -door things? How do you do it? I use social media. I use door-to-door. -door. I use other organizations. Mm -hmm. And I also have uh, volunteers in my organization mm -hmm. who helps in terms of mobilization. Mm -hmm. And I also have a network with other organizations in different counties, or rather in different uh, sub-counties. So they help in terms of mobilization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I wanted to reach out to Awino Love, where can I go in FB? Inter what are the handles? We have Facebook mm -hmm. at Awino Love Foundation. We have uh, Twitter, and we also have Instagram, and also we have uh, an email and a website. Mm -hmm that you can always reach us, yes. Nice. And uh, what are the specific uh, what are the specific things that you can say, these are the activities aside from Semadada that we do? Do you have uh, uh, skills that you train these young girls to do? Do you have education structures that you put some girls who do not go to school in? Uh, currently, we don't have any sort of uh, social entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. well, we only have a uh, school-based program that is taking girls to school. And uh, we, also, we do referrals mm -hmm. in what we don't do. We do re referrals to other organizations that are offering, mm -hmm. like social entrepreneurial uh, skills. And yeah, that is what we do. And uh, you also mentioned about the GBV, the gender-based violence, and it has been rampant since the onset of COVID-19. It's now coming to maybe people are noticing this is a problem. Do you also notice that, and what do you do to help mitigate such? Actually, uh, GBV has, is also a major concern in this country, and those are some of the things that we do as an organization. One, we talk to women on issues GBV and we really try to make them understand that you know it's not a do or die thing if things cannot work they cannot work and the mitigation that as a winner foundation we've done one first and foremost we've we've come up with a safe house where abused women and girls can find shelter then we can give them hope, and they, then we take them through therapy. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that they get justice. Mm -hmm. A safe house is very important because so many cases we've had issues of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. But then the question was, where do we take these people? I had a case of a, a, a girl in campus mm -hmm. who was being abused by the parent, the, the dad. Mm -hmm. But I feel so bad that this girl had to go back because I didn't have anywhere to take her. And her biggest question was, 
What next? What next? Mm -hmm. And who is going to take care of my education? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I cannot take all the GBV cases in my house. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you cannot do that either. Okay. So I try to come up with a solution of identifying a safe space where we can have these victims. Mm -hmm. As we pursue for justice, a place we can keep them and take them through psychosocial support, mm -hmm. hope, so that they don't go back to the perpetrator's house. Imagine a case of a defiled 13-year-old. Th th currently, we are having a case of a 10-year-old who has died mm. because of defilement case. Ukiangalia Vizuri, this kid was taken back to the house, to the house where the perpetrator was, you know? Yeah. And she died of complications. Who knows what happened? So that's why I decided to come up with a safe space mm -hmm. for the victims of gender-based and sexual gender-based abuse, girls and women. Mm -hmm. A place they can be safe as we pursue for their justice. That is, that is so encouraging. And uh, considering that uh, these are cases that lead to even mental health disorders, do you have doctors or psychologists who you work with to help these victims or survivors? Yes, we have counselors mm -hmm. and we have psychologists who, of course, we are partnering with organi organizations that are offering those services mm -hmm. so that they can, be, they can help the victims to go through those phases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of partners, who, who, uh, what other partners do you have in your organization? Uh, we have, in Busia County, we have a caucus of Busia County CSOs network. Mm -hmm. We have uh, an organization called Fight this Depression and Stress mm -hmm. Feeds. They really help uh, our victims in terms of counseling and so psychosocial supports. We have an organization called uh, RIP. RIP has been very vocal on issues gen gender-based violence. She's, she's of a very good support to most of Busia organizations on issues GBV mm -hmm. and other organizations who are, we are sharing the common goal. Yeah. So in this journey, what, uh, have you experienced any challenges? And if you have, what are the challenges? Oh, of course, challenges are many. One, as you had mentioned, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. When COVID-19 came, the issues of gender-based violence, they, they really, dropped. they really, you know. They were up there. They were up, up, up. And you could receive case after case after case, you know. That was one challenge. But then we couldn't do much because everything was on a lockdown, you know. Mm -hmm. Two, of course, resources. Sometimes we don't have enough resources to, to help in these cases. And those are some of the biggest challenges that I can say we've faced. And another one, sometimes we've done a lot of campaigns against teenage pregnancies. But then when you watch news, you find numbers going up yeah instead of instead going, of going down, down so. and then you ask yourself what are we not doing right so you have to go back to the drawing board so those are kind of the challenges that i have faced mm -hmm. as a person and as an organization mm -hmm. but then we really try not to give up but come up with other uh, better ways of bettering our service delivery yeah. And how would you say the community has taken up your initiative as a winner lot? Oh, uh, I'm happy that the community has really embraced a winner love because they, they're seeing, we have, of course, besides challenges, we have some good news mm -hmm. because we have girls who have at least, you know, they got pregnant. But then when they see me, because I use my story, mm -hmm. when they see me, they see hope. Yeah, I can also do it despite this. You know, if Judy got pregnant at this age, but then now look at her, look mm -hmm. at where she is. Mm -hmm. And the community has also shown me that they are really embracing what I do because when I called for fundraising to set up a safe house, mm -hmm. they came in and they really donated wow. towards the safe house. Mm -hmm. This one shows you that they feel the need of having this particular project running. Mm -hmm. So 
the community has really embraced it and I'm very grateful. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, as the fundraisers helped, how else can the society support your agenda moving along? Um, the society, one thing, I really encourage the society to support any form of gender violence because we can only fight this thing if they report. Mm -hmm. Two, we still don't have any funding for the safe house and you know it needs a lot of money because we need food, yeah. we need to employ people, the, the psychologists, the security. So I'm really still asking the society and people who are watching this and people who have gone through the same to come. We accept any support in kind, be it food, be it clothes, be it utensils, anything that can make the safe space running. Mm -hmm. We'll be really grateful. Wow. Yeah. And uh, where do you see a win and love in the future? Maybe five, ten years? Uh, honestly, I'm seeing a grown organization from local mm -hmm. to an international space. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And uh, do you also like, uh, like, do you have volunteers coming in to work with you or it's just a uh, in thing? Yeah, I have volunteers that we work with and actually I receive, every day I receive emails, text messages for people who want to work. Mm -hmm. But because the organization is not that grown, mm -hmm. we can only accommodate a, a particular number of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have, we have a group of volunteers who we work with wow. yes and seeing that you're uh, an amazing young person starting your own thing what can you say to a young person out there who's striving to reach towards what you have reached but kuna challenge katikati what can you tell such a person um i want to tell young people that there's a space for everyone but only if you go for it we want to decampaign this notion that youths always hakuna kazi, hakuna kazi. I, I will use this one, <laughs> one funny statement that a friend of mine always tells me, mm -hmm. that you, Judy, you know your story uh, gave you a career. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, so I will encourage young youths outside there mm -hmm. that um, if you identify a space, there's so many spaces, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We have these people complaining about boy child have been neglected, boy child have been neglected. What are you doing as a, as young, a person young person true, true. to also advocate for a boy child? Mm -hmm. So I will encourage youths that if you identify a space, run with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and make it something that can st stand out mm -hmm. when you are called to speak about it. Sure. Yeah. That is so lovely. I have loved your story that you took such a big challenge. Most of the young ladies who are teenage mothers tend to give up because the family, Amma, the friends around them, they've neglected them. But you took it and ran with it. Now you have a winner love. Congratulations for that. And may you, your initiative take off. Thank you. If you identify a space, run with it. Because the sky is not only the limit, kuna pia mbele kuendelea. All you have to do is take the initiative and go with it. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Krenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way